Hello and welcome to today's Marketing My webinar. We are going to be talking about the new changes brought in on the 30th of March for the Facebook brand pages. Facebook has introduced timeline layout, which we've had on our personal profile for a while, but it's got a lot more impact for the brand pages and how they do things. So first things first, a little bit about me in case you've been to one of my webinars before. My name is Catherine Salt, and I run a social media marketing agency called Marketing Run. Um, if you want to find a bit more about me, you can look at my website, which is marketingmy.co.uk. I also have a Twitter account, and my Twitter handle is MarketMy. And furthermore, you can check out what my brand page looks like on facebook.com forward slash MarketingMy. Now, I've been working in social media for over two years now. And before that, I worked in various marketing uh, areas for the last 10 years. So I've been doing this sort of thing for quite a long time now. Anyway, it all change again. As soon as you think you scandal on something in Facebook, bless them, they change it all. So what we're going to be going through today is how that change is going to affect you. Now, what Facebook have looked to do is make the walls of brand pages become a lot more visual. It's going to be a lot more about telling the story of your business. This means there are no more default landing tab. Prior to the change, you could set up a default landing tab to this wonderful um, graphic welcome tab that could, you could tell people about what your business was, what the benefits liking the page was, and a lovely big strong call to action to try and encourage them to click that magic like button. But what Facebook are trying to encourage brand pages to do now is move away from that sort of promotion to more storytelling. Realistically, for businesses, this makes it a bit trickier because we're so used to just pushing out messages about our business and what's in it for the customer. You know, what discounts, what bargains, why they should buy from you, not about story and or personality of the business. This is an example of what it's going to look like. Coke has done a really nice job of giving a feeling of the product. The pro obviously, it's an iconic product, and they have in their profile image the iconic Coke bottle, which is recognizable. But they've also used images of people to give an idea of what it's like to be a Coca-Cola drinker. You know, the main picture is relaxing. You've got people having fun, smiles. Um, and that's what Facebook are pushing for. A story about your business, something behind the product. Underneath the main profile image and the big wide brand image, you have an about section. Now this is ideally a information about your business. Um, it's a great place to be able to put a little call to action. Also underneath, next to that, you'll see four rectangles. And these four rectangles are for application. Now, previous layout, you would have probably called these pages. So with additional pages that you would have had on your um, brand page. There are, and we'll talk about it later, a number of different things you can utilize this for. Then down the right-hand side, you can see a big, long list of years. This is where you can actually scroll through the history of the business and find a little bit more about the company. However, Facebook never make it <laughs> overly easy for you. There are a lot of restrictions on the cover image. Again, to reinforce the fact that this is not about promoting. It's not about selling. So the restrictions are, and this comes straight from the Facebook, terms, um, Facebook page on 
the new timelines pages, you're not allowed to have any price or purchase information on it. Also, no contact information. So no web address, email, mailing, or other information that's really intended for your about session. Also, you can't tell people to like or share. Now, this is really difficult because I think one of the benefits of the previous layout is you could remind people that you want them to like or share your page. Realistically, if somebody comes to your page and they don't like it, you've lost them and gone. It's very unlikely that they can wander back. And also, then there's no calls to action. Can't say, come visit our website, read this article, get this now, tell your friends, nothing. It's really encouraging the visual aspect of the brand pages. Really good way of kind of not circumventing these restrictions, but using what Facebook are allowing is utilizing the application. Now, this is a website by Amy, uh, sorry, it's Amy Porterfield's brand page. Now, what she's done, I think this is really nice done, is she's used the apps and put calls to action on them. So she has as her second app, a sign up for her mailing list, then a link through to all her videos, and then a link through to a product that you can purchase from her. You actually have 12 applications that you can use and you can reorder them how you like. However, the one thing you will note is that photos will always come first. So realistically, on that top line, those three images are the, your key messages that you want to get across. Now, I would love to say that people are going to visit your page and be so inspired by those top images that are going to click that little arrow next to them and scroll down to see what other applications but as we know, people are intrinsically apathetic. And if you have their attention with those top three there, they are so unlikely to look any further. So talk about the app images. Keep them simple. They're, they're small. Um, so don't make them too complicated. And if underneath or even in the body of the app image, like Amy did, you can have a call to action. It can also be used to highlight off the build your email list. Now, the importance of your email list cannot be underestimated. As important as having a living, breathing, dynamic community on Facebook is, if something happened tomorrow to your page or to Facebook, you would have lost those relationships completely. You do not own those relationships. Facebook owns them. So if you can encourage people to sign up to your email list and move that relationship onto a platform that you own, you've got a lot more chance of, one, keeping it forever, but also deepening it. You don't have to rely on people coming back to your page or seeing your updates in their news feed. And then make sure you rearrange it so that your top three apps show up above the fold. As you can see here on this slide, it has the specifications for the size of your applications icons. The great thing also is you can change the images on third party applications. So for example, on my page, I use MailChimp for my email sign up. But you know, the picture of the monkey is pretty generic. And underneath, it just says email sign up. There's no call to action. Now that can be really easily changed by clicking the little arrow next to the top three icons, which will open up the full 12. And then each app will have a little pencil mark, pencil sign on the top, and you just have to go into edit settings, which is where you can change your image and change your custom tab name. So as I said before, you can have 12 apps, 
make sure you rearrange them. The first app's always going to be photo. And also, there are certain apps you cannot change the images and um, names for. And that's videos, notes, photos, likes, or events. Interestingly, though, and one of the most popular things that people used to do to their welcome tabs in the prior layout is they used to fan gate them. This meant you had to click on the like button to reveal an offer or a video or something else. Um, I think this could still be useful if you have something amazingly compelling, but if they have not clicked on your app, then they won't see this whole fan gating. Also, another change is you get to see your friend's activity on the timeline. So looking at the New York Times Facebook fan page or brand page, you will see that nine of my friends like it. This is an example really of social proof. This shows that my friends and I may ha have this page in common. This gives me an indication that it could be a sort of page I would also be interested in. And then you see that one of my friends, Oz, has mentioned, posted about this page in one of his links. Again, this is further indication that the content on this page may be relevant to me because one of my friends found it interesting. So then underneath that, you see all of the pages that this fan page has liked. Now, it's really worth spending a bit of time with your page, going around liking relevant pages that you can actually build relationships with. It's really hard to build relationships with individuals because you can't speak to them directly, but you can build relationships with pages. But just be really aware of not doing it in a spammy way. Any hint of self-promotion, you could easily get yourself blocked. One of the really interesting things about the new layout is you can actually message fans. Now, I know that sounds a bit like I've just contradicted myself, but you have to be messaged by one of your fans first. This could work really well if somebody is having a problem with your business or there's a customer service issue. Hopefully, it will encourage them to take it off of your wall and contact you directly which then you can resolve the issue or help the, your fan in any way that you see fit. It's going to be interesting to see how long it takes people to start using that option. Also, as part of the new timeline, you can take one of your posts and pin it to the top of your timeline. And that will stay there for seven days. Now, this can be really useful if you have um, a time-sensitive offer or there is a special event. Um, I've used it on my boutique page to highlight my opening hours over the Easter holidays. And it will sit there for seven days. Now, one thing I would also remind you is very few people actually ever come back to your brand page wall after they've clicked that Like button. I think the figure is about 96% of people never come back. You have to turn up, your updates have to turn up in their newsfeed on their own pages. Otherwise, you might as well be talking to yourself. So it's worth remembering that things that you pin or feature on your wall will be primarily seen by first time visitors. In addition to pinning posts, you can star them. What this does, it will take your post and expand it along the two columns of the timeline. This is a great way of highlighting a visual post. So as you can see here from my boutique, I've taken a beautiful image and highlighted it by spreading it across the page. Now this gives you all a very eye-catching look. The idea is when people visit you all for the first time, you catch their attention. Another 
sort of final little point is the milestones. These are quite interesting. As I said before, it's a lot to do with telling the story of your business. Now, if you have a business with a long history, as we have here, it's the New York Times, you can go back and fill in historic dates or milestones in your company's history. This image here is of the newsroom when they're waiting for um, word of Robert Kennedy's condition after he was shot. And it's, again, it's all about telling the story. So that's a brief overview of the timeline. I think there's a lot of potential for brand pages here. Um, think about how you can make your wall very visual. Don't just use images. You can use videos. Um, if you are putting any post up, even if it's just text, see about putting an image on that relates to the copy you're writing just to make keep your page visually engaging. So I would love to see your pages. You can post your pages on my Marketing My Wall um, and tell me a little bit about them. If you have any problems, again, come along to facebook.com forward slash marketing my and I'm happy to answer any queries you have. Um, next month's webinar is all about creating winning websites for your salon. It can be really easy when you're looking to have a website set up for your business just to throw some money at an agency. However, if you don't write a proper brief for your agency, it can quickly, costs can escalate because as good as any agency is, they aren't mind readers. Also, there's lots of other ways of setting up a website. If you don't have the budget for an agency or you want to have a go yourself, I'm going to be exploring different ways that you can do that. So this is setting up a website for a non-e-commerce business. I'm using the case of a salon, but if you have a restaurant or you have um, a hair practice, this would be quite a good webinar for you to join too. So again, thank you very much for joining, and I hope you found it useful.